Okay, everyone, here we are at our CryEngine Programming Lecture Series at SNHU. I'd like to welcome everyone. I'm Tom Adamson, um, visiting professor. This particular lecture is on, this is lecture four. This is on game logic design, challenges and solutions. This is an important lecture, not that all of them are important, but the reason why is because this lecture here sets up the reasons why we're going to be using the examples in future lectures, the uh, flow graph examples that we will be using. So let's, let's see the game logic design. Let's see the challenges and solutions for that. Okay, at last count, there were 42 different node classes. Here's some of them in the CryEngine flow graph. 42 of these guys, if I counted them right, and there's probably even more on the way, with some of them offering more than 500 separate nodes. So let me give you an example here. This one is uh, on the AI node class, and it has, I think, 48 or 50 or something different nodes, and this is just one of the classes. And then we can speculate that there are around 1,000 different nodes with various combinations of input and output ports available to the game logic designer. Here's a couple of nodes as an example. We've already seen some of the nodes. And there's different input ports. There's the different output ports. The point is, this is a bit overwhelming. So it should be obvious that some kind of logical process is needed by the game lo logic designer, you, me, to determine which node classes and which nodes within those classes are needed to effectively create a desired game logic system. Okay, so there should be some kind of process we can use that will help us determine which of these node classes that we should look at for the game logic we're trying to design, rather than looking at 10,000 examples and hopefully we can memorize a few of them. Uh, the, a trial and error system is not one desired by game companies with limited design budgets. Probably, if I were interviewing you for a job uh, in game design and we were going to be using the CryEngine and I wanted you to use the, um, the, the uh, programming program uh, that, that we're talking about here, I would ask you, what is your approach to doing a logical design using the flow graph? What is your approach to do it? If you just tell me we just try different things to get something working, I'll probably say, thank you, but I'm not interested. So let's look at one that I've used, and it's a suggested one. There's other systems, too, that you can use, but I found that this one works well for when you're doing this kind of game logic programming. Suggested system consists of four of the following key areas. The first area is a game logic breakdown, and we'll talk about that. What is a game logic breakdown? How do I break that down? Then the next one is fundamental questions in game logic design. What questions should I ask myself do I need to have answered if I'm going to do a, a game logic design? And then what approach should I use to designing the game? Obviously, it's not going to be a trial and error approach because that's very expensive time-wise. And four, implementation of your proposed logic design. How do you actually implement it in the most efficient and effective manner? Okay, that's what we're going to be looking at. So this is the game logic breakdown. The game logic breakdown breaks down to an event. An event consists of an action, a process as a result of that action, and the results, some kind of results as a result of that process. Now, we're going to be talking about uh, each of these items. We're going to define what an event is, define what an action is, define what a process is, define what a, a result is. Just to give you an idea, I press the left mouse button, and, and the game processes that press on the left mouse button and realizes, wait a minute, I'm supposed to fire the weapon, and the results are the weapon gets fired, which is another action produces another process because it hit the target, and now it's processing what happened with the target, and I get another result that the target now gets mad at me and fires back. So that's an event, and someone's got to program it. And you know what? It's going to be us. An event. An event is any meaningful system change. 
there's two types of events in, in designing game logic. There's external events, which is something done by the player, okay, whoever's playing the game or group of players, or internal events, something done by the game. So when we look at events, we see there's two kinds. There's the kinds that we can cause to happen, or there's the kind that the game can cause to happen. Actions is an activity that begins an event. Can be a singular or a combination. A singular is a mouse click. That's a sing that's an example of a singular activity. Combinations can be a mouse click while holding down the shift key. So the point is, if we're going to do actions for our, our game logic, what kind of a action is it going to be? A singular or a combination? Once we know that, that helps us narrow down the kinds of tools we need. A process is a sequence of activities to achieve a desired result. It's generally referred to as a program. This is where the flow graph comes in with the nodes. That's when we, we construct it. It consists of implementing the logic, math, physics, and other requirements used to determine the results of the actions. So remember back here, we had on this slide, where was it? Um, okay. We had action, the process, okay, and then this is the result from that action, okay. So let me go, I guess I, I guess I can skip ahead here, right? Um, there's the results right there, okay. All right, so the results is the measurable change resulting from a process. Can be a singular or combination. Okay, let me get back to here. Uh, the result of firing a weapon is a destroyed target, could be a destroyed target, and then one less ammo, and then alerting the enemy. So results can have a single uh, 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 thing or combinations of things that can happen uh, as a result of the process. Now a condition is a stored value from an event. A condition would be the health of the player. Another condition would be the location of the player. So conditions are things that we're going to store in storage between uh, events. And then when we do an event, we're going to see if there's any required conditions that we need to look at. And this will help us determine which uh, nodes we should be using. Now, here's the fundamental questions in game logic design. And we should answer every one of these. And we should answer them, writing them out, so that it's clear we, that we know what we're doing. First one is, what is the event you'd like to accomplish? Second one, how is the event related to other game events? And then three, what actions are required to initiate this event? Then four, what process or processes must be used to service this event? And do any of these processes require information from previous events or conditions? Do any conditions need to be created or modified as a result of these processes? And then what are the possible results of the event? So we need to look at these and analyze these, and this is what we're going to be doing when we go do solve problems in future lectures. We'll be given a problem. I'll walk you through a solution using this right here so you start getting the hang of how you can get a problem and then solve it rather than trying to memorize four or five different examples and hope that you can modify them some way by uh, trial and error to fit what you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a professional approach to uh, designing these. An approach to game logic design. This is number three. As a game logic designer, you need to have in writing the answers to the seven questions of game logic design, the seven that we just did. You should have some idea of what flow graph node classes you may need uh, to use in order to accomplish the required event. For example, is your intended event an internal or external event? If it's an external event, then what sensors will be used by the player to initiate the event? Now, sensors are game controllers, keyboards, mou mouse, voice, camera, and other such devices. This is going to help us determine what classes of ports we should be using. Is it, if it is an internal event, then what game conditions will initiate the event? A game condition could be the reaction of an NPC, such as firing a weapon or casting a spell. 
So what we need to do, if we answer those questions, that'll help us begin to uh, narrow down the kinds of node classes and nodes within those classes that we need to use for our game logic design. Implementing implementation of your logic design. What you'll see in future examples is we will start with the simplest possible example. And then we'll use all practical debugging tools. So the debugging class of, of, of nodes is going to be a very important one for us to know and understand. Then we'll code in small steps, testing every step possible. And I, can, I can't repeat that enough. Code in small steps. Don't write a, Don't put in a bunch of notes, connect them up with your fingers crossed and hope it'll work. And then there's three other things you should do. Back up, back up, and back up. Okay? And I'll show you, we'll go through methods of backing up your game logic designs. And, and doing that will help you design them uh, much more efficiently. Okay, let's do a review. The reason why we went through this was because there's about 42 different node classes available. And each of these can offer up to 50 or more separate nodes. So how do we know which one of these to use when we want to do a, a design? Well, one of the things we should know now that we're going to use, we're going to use the debug. And we're going to use that debug on every one that we create. So we need to become intimately familiar with the debug node class. We at least know that. And of course, we'll see some others that we really need to become familiar with because they will be the foundational building blocks of just about every one of our flow graphs. We can speculate that there are around 1,000 different nodes with various combinations of input and output ports available to the game logic designer. In this course, in this lecture series, we will focus on those nodes that are most commonly used and then build from them. Just like, just like the node that we, we've been using, uh, well, we don't have it here, but the node where we're displaying a message, for example, that's a very common node. Or the game start node, that's another uh, very common node. Okay. Now, here's a happy game logic programmer because it was obvious that some kind of logical process was needed by him to determine which node classes, which nodes within those classes are needed to effectively create a desired game system. And that's what we're going to emphasize in this lecture series so that when you finish it, you'll have under your belt, so to speak, some very good logical tools to help you design uh, computer game logic. Okay, thank you for your attention to this lecture, and um, after the lecture is over, I'll stay, and if you got questions, I'll be happy to try and answer them. If there's anything you want me to review, uh, I'll be happy to do that. Okay, that's it.